Now, uh, let me just comment, first of all, on the fact that uh, I can't get the networks to break in on all kinds of other discussions. <laughs> I was just back there listening to Chuck. He was saying, it's amazing that he's not going to be talking about national security. I would not have the networks breaking in if I was talking about that, Chuck, and you know it. Wrong channel. Uh, <laughs> 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 the, uh, uh, as many of you have been briefed, uh, we provided additional information today about uh, the site of my birth. Now, this issue has been going on for two, two and a half years now. I think it started during the campaign. And I have to say that over the last two and a half years, I have watched with uh, bemusement. I've been puzzled at the degree to which this thing just kept on going. Uh, we've had every official in Hawaii, Democrat and Republican, every news outlet that has investigated this confirmed that, yes, in fact, I was born in Hawaii, August 4th, 1961, in Kapi'olani Hospital. We've posted the uh, certification that is given by the state of Hawaii on the Internet for everybody to see. People have provided affidavits that they, in fact, have seen this birth certificate, and yet this thing just keeps on going. I'm going to turn this over to Mike Zullo, who dedicated five years of his life, five years of his life, taking this mission on, which I asked him to do five years ago. Mike, come on up and give you a shot. Thank you, Sheriff. I, I want to start by trying to give everyone here, including the media that's been viciously against us from the beginning, an understanding of how I tried to conduct this investigation. I believe in 2012 we did two press conferences. In those press conferences, I had made it clear that Sheriff Arpaio's original mandate to me was, Mike, take a look at this, clear this document, because I want to be the guy that clears this document and moves this country forward. This is no good. That was the mandate. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Like the sheriff just told you, when you conduct criminal investigations, you have to let the evidence lead you. You never lead the evidence. And in doing this, my motive was to clear the document. Because to be quite honest with you, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe this was possible. I didn't think this would ever happen in this nation. I didn't believe it. Back in 2012, I told you about Reed Hayes, a document examiner. Let me tell you about Reed Hayes, a man with 40 years, since 1974, 40 plus years of experience in examining forensic document, handwriting, a man who's well respected in his expertise, a court recognized expert, a document examiner. He is the man you go to when somebody gives you a bad check with a bad signature. This is the guy you run to. Law firms use him all the time. He's been maligned. And let me tell you something about Mr. Hayes. When I contacted Mr. Hayes, Mr. Hayes told me right, about, right off the bat, I'm, a, I'm an Obama supporter. I, I voted for him twice. He goes, and I will never do anything to hurt the President of the United States. What I had said to him was, Reed, I am not asking you to hurt the President of the United States. I'm asking you to take a look at this document and clear it and tell me there's nothing wrong with it. Would you at least do that? And he took a look at it. And when he called me back, he told me, Mike, I can't clear this, there's something wrong with it. And I asked him, I said, Reed, would you continue? I said, I know your position, but would you continue? And his answer to me was, this is what I do. I'll look at it. I'll do it. That's a man of integrity. 
respecting what his ability is to get to the truth. Because for Sheriff Apayo and myself, this was never about Barack Obama. This is about a document. You take that document and you remove the name Barack Hussein Obama and put your name on there. If it was your document and it was brought to us, we would do the same thing with this document. This document was being investigated from the only way that I ever knew how to do it. You look to prove the guilty party innocent, the one you suspect. If you can prove him innocent, you don't put the wrong guy in jail. But when you try to prove him innocent and the evidence starts to stack up, now you change because the guilt is coming to the top. That's the way this was done. Jerry Corsi and WND. I grilled Jerry Corsi for 16 hours. This is no joke. I didn't believe anything he was showing me until he showed me one document. Everybody thinks it's the Obama document when I had said that in the past. It wasn't. Jerry Corsi and WND, they're on to something. I'm not so sure they knew it was going to go the way it's going now, but they were on to something. And what we're going to show you today is information that you have never seen before. It was information that was developed by the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office in assistance with actually the gentleman who makes my videos, Mr. Mark Galar. Mark Galar has a unique ability when it comes to digital software and, and this whole video thing that he does. And Mark Galar and I were on a Skype call. Had to be felt like years. We, we would go back and forth for years. And at one point, I did alert Mr. Galar to what I was suspecting, and we began to work at it together. What I'm going to do right now is I am going to let the video play in its entirety. Then I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to clear some things up. And then I'm going to let it play one more time, and I'm going to stop it periodically and address some things. I really want you to sit back and have an open mind, because what you're going to see is we utilized forensic document examiners, Reed Hayden in Hawaii, and a company named Forlab in Italy. And I have two different disciplines. I have Reed Hayes, a document examiner, Four Labs, forensic digital technicians. Four Labs trains law enforcement throughout Europe. Four Labs specialty is child pornography cases. Four Labs, everybody in that building is a PhD with math equations that, my God, I've never seen in my life. These guys know their stuff. And I'm going to tell you what I respect about both of them. Both Reed Hayes and Marco at Four Labs stayed true to their discipline. One of the tests you do when you have an expert, you want to make sure your expert isn't trying to run you for the money. If I can push the expert, that's not a guy I want. These men could not be pushed. This is their findings, this is how they see it, and this is how they're calling it. So I'm going to run this video for you, and I want you to understand this has nothing to do with anything we ever did before. It doesn't negate what we did before, and I'll explain that. It is new, and it's profound. And it is, it's quite disturbing. So let me play the video for you now, and then we'll move on. You are looking at two long-form birth certificates from the state of Hawaii. According to the dates on the certificates, these births took place in Honolulu during the month of August in 1961, just 16 days apart. The birth certificate on the left belongs to Barack Obama. The birth certificate on the right belongs to Johanna Ani. After five years of intense investigation, which included consultation with one of America's most respected forensic document examiners and a team of European media forensic experts, the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office has reached a conclusion utilizing forensic techniques both old and new. It is the opinion of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office that the birth certificate on your right belonging to Johanna Ani was in fact used as a source document in the digital creation of Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. 
nine points of forgery in which words, letters, and hand-placed date stamps have been digitally copied from the Ani long-form birth certificate and pasted onto Obama's long-form birth certificate. We'll look at the first five points of forgery together since they were brought over from the Ani document in one group. Now let's drop out the Ani document as a background and view that again. Now let's look at the date stamps in box 20 and 22. In this case, the stamps were brought over one at a time. But as we do this experiment, ask yourself, what are the odds that two stamps in two separate boxes, stamped by hand 16 days apart, would have the exact same angle in box 20 and the exact same angle in box 22? First, we'll look at the left stamp. Now the right stamp. It should be pointed out that these stamps were looked at by two separate document examiners who specialize in two separate forensic disciplines and who reside on two different continents. Both agreed that these angles are identical on both the Obama document and the Ani document. Let's watch that again without all of the background clutter. It should be noted that Susan and Gretchen Nordyke were born five minutes from each other and have consecutive serial numbers. Therefore, their date stamps ostensibly would have been put on back to back. But as you can see, looking at the leftmost date stamps underlined in red and looking at the rightmost date stamps underlined in blue, there is no similarity in terms of the angle of the date stamps. How ironic that Barack Obama's birth certificate and Johanna Ani's birth certificate, which were stamped 16 days apart, are identical in angle according to two separate disciplines within the world of forensic document examination, and yet the Nordite twins, born five minutes from each other, stamped back to back, don't show any similarity in angles. We've made a number of references to angles so far. The reason for that is if you're going to take an item off of one document and place it onto another, the angle is going to remain the same unless you intentionally alter it after you place it on the second document. Watch. When you have two separate documents with two hand-placed date stamps at the same angles, it should be obvious that a forgery has taken place. For the next example, we'll need to zoom in a little bit. Now we are going to focus on boxes 6D and 6E within the Obama PDF. Both X's were taken directly from box 6D in the Ani long-form birth certificate. In fact, not only was the X pulled over, but the box itself was pulled over 
and various parts of the line on top of the X were also pulled over according to forensic document experts. Next, we'll drop the INI document out of the picture except for the items that were used to create the Obama birth certificate. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.